In this video we're doing a 250 hour service on a 966H loader. First we need to swing the wheel fenders out and remove the side panels on the engine. They just sit on three hooks and you just pull up and slide out. On the left side of the machine is the engine oil filter and engine oil drain tap. We will start with the engine oil drain tap which is beside the engine oil filter. The tap is a bit over hand tight so give the handle a hit with something and it will come loose. Put a drum underneath the loader to drain the oil in and then undo the tap. Above the engine oil filter is the oil cooler and it holds a residual amount of oil that will run out over the top of the oil filter when you undo it and make a mess. So a good idea is to drive a hole in the bottom of the oil filter and let it drain out while you drain the engine oil. I used a sharp screwdriver to punch a hole through that filter. They're pretty weak, it doesn't take much. On the other side of the engine are the fuel filters. I use a large set of multi grips to undo the filters. Filter straps are good, but I just find the multi grips more convenient. With the water trap filter, try and grab it by the plastic bowl underneath and undo it and hopefully that comes off first. This one didn't and I'll have to take it off separately but if you can get them one at a time, that'll make it a whole lot easier. These fuel systems prime up real well on these machines so you don't have to worry about doing one at a time. Grab your trusty screwdriver and just drive a hole through that filter and you should be able to get it with the multi grips as well. You reuse these filter bowls so make sure you clean out any water and contaminants. Primary fuel filter comes with two O-rings you need to pre-install. Your larger of the two O-rings goes on the filter bowl. You'll want to lubricate with something. I'm using petroleum jelly. They don't need much, just a light film around the ring, both sides. Air can get sucked into the fuel system if this isn't done properly, so just take care and make sure your O-ring's in the right spot. I'm just fitting it on there now and I'll do it up tight when the filter's on the housing. Next we have to install that smaller o-ring. I'm going to put it on the hollow stud on the filter housing itself. That way I know it's in the right spot and it will sit there on the ridge until I put the filter on. The base of the filter housing there is still dripping with fuel from when I took the old filter off. I'm not going to lubricate the top of the fuel filter because I try and get away from touching the filter if I can. It's just more chance of contaminants and because it's lubricated there um, it's not going to catch on the o-ring and I can do that filter up tight without worrying about that. These filters have instructions in a drawing form on how to install the filter. I find that if you just put the filter on and tighten it up hand tight, um, that just that seems to work. They don't come undone and they're not too hard to get off. And that seems to work on all different types of oil filters and fuel filters. And then I just nip up the bowl on the bottom of the filter. So the fuel gets sucked up from the tank and goes through this filter, the primary fuel filter, and then on to the secondary filter. When handling these spin-on filters, I try and rip from the bottom and then put it in position and then just pull the plastic off from the top and then straight on. Especially when doing a service out in the field, you really want to limit contamination. And bring it up to the O-ring, touches the filter base and then hand tie it. This little plastic tap is what you use to bleed the air out of the fuel system. And this little toggle switch here starts the electric pump. So you turn the yellow tap towards the hose and start your electric pump up. This fuel system is super easy to bleed. You can see the fuel coming through already. And you just run it until you see fuel come out of the hose. This is a manual prime pump only. This is not a lift pump for the main fuel pump. If you have the key on or the engine running, the fuel pump won't work. As you can see, fuel's bleeding through there, so you just shut your tap off and start the little pump up and you'll hear it load up and that's when you know she's primed and ready to go. I 
I don't pre-fill engine oil filters. The risk of contamination is too great and there's no real gain as the engine builds oil pressure very quickly. Once all the engine oil is drained out, remove the filter. Because we punched a hole in that filter, now it'll be nice and dry when we take it out. I don't lubricate the O-ring on the oil filter, here's why. Look at the filter base after taking that filter off, it's covered in oil. There's more than enough oil there to lubricate the O-ring. Same as the other filters, rip the bottom plastic off, put it in position and then pull the whole plastic sheet off and filter it off. Do it up till the o-ring touches the filter base and then one full turn. Tighten the drain tap up by hand and then take it with a shifter an extra one sixteenth of a turn. We're using 15W840 oil. This is the filler tube for the engine. I'm pumping out a 44 gallon drum, it takes about 35 litres this engine. Because I put the engine oil filter on dry, you need to compensate the oil level a bit by adding a bit more oil. I usually bring the oil level on the dipstick past the second L on the full mark. Next we'll take the air filter out, it's got three clips that hold the lid on. This air filter is very choked. The dust has actually got past the first filter and onto the second filter, so we're going to replace both at this time. Blowing an air filter out isn't hard, you just force the dust off the filter the opposite way it got sucked onto it. And you just keep working it back and forth until eventually there's no dust left. That's the um, blower I'm using. I usually use that to hook up to air tanks, but it also works out good for blowing out filters. Make sure you inspect your filter housing. There was so much dust on these filters that it got between the filters and where the filter seals onto the housing, there's, build up, there's a build up of dust. You've got to remove that or else as soon as you put the filter on there, you're going to get dust bypass there. I'm using brake cleaner to clean where I can't get my hands. Once you've cleaned it, make sure you remove all the brake cleaner with a rag. You don't want to leave that in there and have the engine suck brake cleaner in. Just like fuel fillers, your inner filter is your secondary filter and your primary filter is the larger outer one. Push the lid on and tighten up the three clips. Check the condition of your fan belt, make sure it's tight and not cracked. Check the condition of your rollers, make sure they're in good condition. Now after doing a service I'll go and do a full pre-start just so I don't miss anything. Check that you have coolant in your header tank. Check that you have hydraulic oil. 
check that you have transmission oil and dip your engine oil again and just check that. The only light that should illuminate should be your park brake. I went and dipped the engine oil again, it's now at the correct level. We also got to grease our universal joints. There's one between the back diff and the transmission. Now you want to grease the spiders each side and you want to give it about 5 grams of grease. You, you want to, as you hear the air escaping, you want to stop greasing. You don't want to have it grease pouring out the seals because you'll wreck the seals. The support bearing there. Um, we're going to reach them from up top. A little bit hard to get, but we can get that sliding jack shaft one from the bottom. Uh, this front one, this is the front diff here. Its nipple fell out, so we're putting a new nipple in. And then we'll do the same. Grease it just until we can hear the grease start to come out. In between the articulation, there's some grease points there. This handbrake side. This is the um, transfer case side on the other side. This is the hood actuator, it needs a bit of grease every service too. We check the fuel caps every service. Uh, you can see this one's got problems, it's letting dust through. Knock the roll pin out and it all comes apart. And that's a basic 250 hour service.